Safe by Accident, Taking the Luck Out of Safety. In this video, author Dr. Judy Agnew talks about the place in an organization where creating a culture of safety often falls short. And it's not the front line. It's with leadership. Creating a safe physical environment is the number one job of leadership as it relates to safety. It's their job. They have the control over the budgets and, and, and resources to be able to create and maintain a safe physical environment. And that's number one. We have to give people a safe place to work. The problem is that the perception of what's, what a safe environment is at the leadership levels and what it is at the hourly levels are very different. So the hourly workers will be working in an environment where they feel like there's a lot of unsafe conditions. Leadership don't necessarily know that that's taking place. One of the problems we have here is the people don't always report unsafe conditions. And the reason they don't often report unsafe conditions has to do with consequences. A lot of hourly workers will tell you, I've reported unsafe conditions in the past and nothing happens. When that happens a few times, that behavior of reporting undergoes extinction. So guess what? They're not going to report anymore. The other thing that happens when people report hazardous conditions is actually a mild form of punishment. When I report a condition, I have to stop what I'm doing, fill out some lengthy paperwork, and, and do a bunch of activities that I don't like to do and that take me away from the job that I'm supposed to be doing. So we actually make it difficult for people to report. So we've got to make sure that we make it easy for people to report, that we're getting those conditions to the right people, and then the management actually goes ahead and, and uses the resources to make sure the conditions are taken care of. Managers often make the mistake of not having an effective process in place where employees can alert management about safety issues. Think of it this way. Most at-risk conditions are reported to a supervisor on the fly. So they'd be walking through an environment on their way to do something, million things on their mind, and an hourly worker says, hey, you know, this piece of equipment's leaking oil and there's a tripping hazard or a slip hazard here. The supervisor has great intentions. They want to see that fixed. But by the time they get to where they're going, they've forgotten about that. They've dealt with three other issues on the way. And so a lot of it has to do with, again, the reporting, how the reporting takes place. And then we make sure we capture all the at-risk conditions that are reported and then follow through and make sure they get taken care of. There are a lot of things that go wrong in a plant. Uh, you know, this operating equipment 24 hours a day, seven days a week, things start to break down. And what we've got to do is make sure that um, those things are captured and that somebody is making sure that we're following through and getting them fixed. It's a great idea when we can to empower the hourly worker to make the change. In many cases, they will do that when they can. Uh, unfortunately, often it requires a mechanic or special equipment or other resources, money, uh, often, to fix those things. So when you can empower the hourly employee, absolutely, that's the right thing to do. It just doesn't always work that way. Safe by accident, taking the luck out of safety. For more from Dr. Judy Agnew and Aubrey Daniels, and to purchase the book, Safe by Accident, visit the website safebyaccident.com.